There have been many instances where people have been burned to death during fire outbreaks in Ghana. The head of the Center for Settlement Studies under the College of Arts and Built Environment at KNUSD, Professor Divine Ahaji says, although the law requires architects to put up structures bearing in mind that there should be an exit during emergencies, many do not strictly comply with it. With this new innovation by the researchers at KNUSD, Professor Divine Ahaji says, this is a game changer which could help save a lot of lives. As you can see here, this is the traditional way that our normal burglar proof window that we are all aware of. That's how it, is, it has been constructed over the years. And normally you see that we don't have any means of escape or opening. But this is in response to the building regulations uh, NI 1630 1996, clause 90, where there's a provision that apart from, for every structure, apart from the doorway, there should be an opening in the structure for means of escape in the event of fire. So we look at it critically and saw that there's the need to be able to fabricate this window, to be able to respond to that. And that is how it all started somewhere in the year 20, 2010. And so, as you will see here, this is our first attempt in trying to fabricate the window so that it can be opened, you know. So we did this first design and then, as you can see, so that in the event of fire, one can, the family can have a means of escape and escape from the fire. But this was to be locked with a, a padlock. And there was this issue about if uh, you are in that haste and the, the, the key is misplaced, then it might become difficult for even the family to, hold, to escape. And also at that time, the idea was that once you are in the crisis situation, they have to break the glasses before they move out. So we thought deeper about it and now came with a further prototype design, which is here to demonstrate that uh, we can do away with the padlock and still even design the unit, including the glass and the burglar proof and the mosquito net as one unit. So that in the event of fire, you can just push it and then the family can escape. And this is what we are demonstrating. Professor Devan had you warned government to strictly enforce the laws on it. He is, however, calling on the private sector to partner with them in order to have similar designs at various homes across the country. As an academic uh, institution, we are into research and innovation uh, and not necessarily into production. And so now that uh, this is out and we have demonstrated that it is possible, of course, we have got the intellectual property rights, you know, so we want to partner the private sector so that it can be produced on a mass scale and we can offer training so that it becomes uh, a standard practice for housing uh, construction in the country. Professor Divine Haji spoke to City News on the sidelines of a four-day science and technology exhibition as part of KNUSD's 70th anniversary. The many inventions the students and faculty members have come up with include solar power traffic lights, wireless quiz bazaar, self-driving car using computer vision devices, various electronic and mechanical devices. The Vice Chancellor of KNUSD, Professor Rita Kusia Dixon, is thus calling for partnership with industry players to help commercialize these innovations by the university. KNUSD believes in constructive partnership and we cherish the kind of partnership that we enjoy with our industrial partners and I want to use it, this occasion to really lay emphasis on the fact that we are very grateful to our industrial partners. They help us to bring the practicalities of our training of our students to bear on what we do and we want to say we are grateful to them and uh, we welcome them to even help us to commercialize all these um, research outcomes that are coming. They should come and pick it up and then um, take it all out there so that it will be very beneficial to society. Industry players who witnessed the exhibition in an interview with City News stressed the need for the university to do more in liaison with industry. I'm very happy with what I've seen today and I think it's a step in the right direction and where academia and industry should be collaborating. It's good to start with the curriculum that the school offers but they can better improve on it when they engage industry to know where the world is going, what the industry expects and then the, the curriculum is updated continuously. private sector uh, has resources 
especially maybe financial resources. Academia also has resources, intellectual resources. So how do we now bring intellectual resources and financial resources to have a product that can be commercialized? That is what we should be thinking about. SIGA represents uh, public entities and other state entities and also um, JVs in which the government has an interest. I think it's our responsibility to link what we've seen today to some of their um, aspirations and also some of the products and also to introduce them to some of these products so that they can take it and, t and take it to the next level which as I said earlier is moving it from the classroom from the lecture rooms to people's homes to also get some of the financial institutions to put money behind some of these innovations so that it's no longer an idea by something that can uh, um, something that can reach a lot of people beyond the classroom.